he could sense the company master's fury, the rage he was battling to keep in check. The blindness was beckoning to him, that precipice poised above a black sea of hatred and needless slaughter sacrifice. Chief Librarian T. Kahirangi's assessment of 3rd Captain Akir. The Karkaradans High Gothic Karkaradan Astra. Low Gothic Space Sharks are a loyalist space marine chapter of unknown heritage. Little is known about them, aside from the fact that they usually appear amidst campaigns quietly and unannounced, and respond to threats with surprising ruthlessness and brutality. They are noted to use much older and very patched up heresy era armor and weaponry in red tie the squad carries around a Vokide Caliver, an extremely rare piece of tech in the 41st millennium, and in battle seem to be utterly silent, even when visiting bloody murder on their foes. Very old records say they were sent out on a crusade outside the borders of Imperium controlled space to, for all intents and purposes, preemptively kill anything that may or may not be a future threat to the Imperium of Man. And to our best knowledge, they were promptly forgotten about, because when they showed up again, no one knew who the hell they were or what side they were on. The Karkaradans officially returned to the Imperial Consciousness during the Badr War, where it's kinda hinted that they are avant-garde mutants or descended from those other deranged genocidal space marines, the Night Lords. Siding with the loyalists in the conflict, the chapter descended in strength upon the worlds of the Mantis Warriors. And it is in this phase of the campaign that the chapter's reputation for bloody violence was made known. With the Mantis warriors forced to surrender, the chapter was then set upon Badab itself, though they helped conclusively secure victory for the Imperials, by detonating the reactors of the primary hives on the planet. The resultant tectonic upheavals eventually destroyed Badab, and to this day the Star Phantoms pin the blame on the Sharks for the losses they experienced in the hurried evacuation that followed. But the war was officially won, for its troubles. The chapter returned to the Endymion Cluster one last time, ransacked the fortresses of the Mantis Warriors for material and their worlds for recruits, and quietly returned to the darkness of the galactic plane where it originally came from. Their leader is Tiberius the Red Wake, a badass Mathificate who couldn't decide if he liked lightning claws or chain fists better, so he made hunger and slake. A pair of lightning chain claws, the ugly offspring of the two weapons after a couple glasses of black rubble and a night of extremely violent and questionable life choices. That allow him to one shot swipe, stab, tyrannid carnifexes and space marine dreadnoughts. This would usually make anyone else a Mary Sue, but this guy is so badass and has the most awesome weapons in the setting, that he has earned immunity so long as he doesn't punch guys in space without wearing a helmet, though very quiet in the way of formal encounters. Tybris, when war ensues, becomes something that nightmares piss themselves to think about. During the Badr War, Tybris wrote a name for himself and his chapter across the surface of the planet in the blood of the Mantis warriors. Clad in a set of ancient Terminator armor, Tybris was always on the front lines, and ensured that the traitors paid for all the trouble they caused in blood and resources. Going about this task in the grimly silent fashion known to be common to the Karkaradans. This is what some believe the space sharks look like. This is what they really look like. Yes, we assure you that they are good guys. Maybe. Organization. The sharks are a fleet based chapter. At some point in their history, Rangu their word for the emperor banished them from their home world and set them to hunt amongst the stars and slaughter the enemies of man with no quarter. To this day, no one knows why they were banished. To this end, he granted the right of tithe, the grey, all the physical material they needed for their duty, and the red, a claim to prisoners, rebels, rejects, and other detritus for ship crew and potential recruits. They are explicitly forbidden from taking serving members of the Adeptus Terror Reed, anyone from any other branch of the Imperium in their tithing. The Grey Tithe is usually a semi-regular swap meet with allied members of the Mechanicum, bartering a few pieces of architecture for freshly made Matty Reel. Another chapter wide tray is an intentional lack of ego and individuality. Line troopers are frequently given numerical designations when inducted. Each battle brother is only a part of the utility of the whole, leading Karkaradan command to eschew concepts like honor and pride driven vengeance that drive other chapters to action. Only by following their ancient mandate of exile can they be worthy. They hope their actions or more likely their descendants actions will redeem them for their crimes and allow them to return home, wherever that might originally be. Most chapter veterans don't believe this and channel their shame and remorse into meticulously violent murder. This also ties into their nomadic nature, as they can't risk wasting time and resources on badly thought out plan. The Karkaradans follow the battle half of the codex but ignore everything else about force organization. 
Cruising around in the void beyond the galaxy's edge can be nasty business, and years without resupply or any kind of logistical support means they must be both flexible and resourceful. Each company practices high self-reliance, salvaging, repairing and repurposing stuff to make sure it lasts as long as possible. This is why they sport so much working heresy era gear and why stuff like vehicles and terminator armor are often kept together using a variety of patterns and models. Because of this, Tech Marines are seldom seen on the battlefield. They also don't use reserve companies realizing that having 100 of the finest warriors sitting around doing nothing is fucking stupid. Each company is thought to be a self-contained force, with their own scouts and veterans, ensuring they've got guys for every situation on hand. This has drawbacks of course, as they can't simply ask for reinforcements from a reserve company and must make do. For this reason apothecaries are prized and kept off the front lines since every marine makes a difference. At the same time it means that they've got all their companies actively doing stuff. It seems likely that their scorched earth campaign during the Badab war was in fact more of a violent looting spree. Restocking the Karkaradans inventory after having spent so long outside known space, filling up on ammo, weapons, armor, supplies, and grabbing everything that wasn't nailed down, followed by the nails, and then everything that used to be nailed down, before destroying anything else the enemy could possibly have had a use for. We do know that they claimed a bunch of recruits post Badab, and they probably do this after all their big campaigns maybe every time they come back into contact with the Imperial. The Red Tithe novel appears to confirm this theory, the Karkaradan's third company, having just come off a nasty brawl with some Tyranids. Rocked up to a remote Imperial prison planet with the intent of claiming all of its inmates as either serfs or potential recruits. A Night Lord's Warband had the same idea and arrived just before they did. The two groups proceeded to have a slight disagreement about who was going to empty out this wretched hive of scum and villainy. After several rounds of murder tag and several thousand casualties later, the Karkaradans were victorious. They scooped up all the prisoners, stripped the place bare, and took off before Imperial reinforcements could arrive. The Imperium at large is mostly unaware of their existence, with even members of the Inquisition having limited information about them. The shark's lack of glory-seeking ego doesn't help with this. For example, the defense of a world by a depleted company of Blood Angels was relieved by a Karkaradan's attack force. Who managed to impress concern the angels by being even more batshit crazy murderous in assault than the blood angels themselves were. When the dusk settled, the blood angels were given a fancy memorial and got a space boat named after them but the space sharks went unremembered. Save for a few crumbling statues in a forgotten corner with blank obsidian discs for faces. A few members of the inquisition have naturally raised concerns about this apparently undocumented force of astarts just wandering around the galaxy with a predilection for wholesale slaughter and leaving very few survivors on either side when they're done. To give an example from Karkaradan's Outer Dark, in order to force a Genestealer cult out into the open on a shrine world, the Karkaradans gave the order to shut down every temple and pilgrimage site on the planet, knowing that this would cause mass civil unrest and thus force the cult to move ahead with their plans prematurely. It ended up totally working and disrupting part of a Tyranid invasion, but it also turned out that there were so many cultists on the planet that the Karkaradans decided fuck it. The Emperor can sort them out and promptly started just killing everyone with the help of some renegade marines they'd invited along for the ride. There was only one survivor left from the ensuing chaos afterwards. An inquisitorial aide who witnessed a space marine force of questionable loyalty slaughtering a planet population wholesale, be being allied with genuinely renegade space marines. And see a Karkaradan's librarian apparently being partly bonded to a demon that had haunted her too. Loyalist chapters have been exterminated for far less. Gene Seed Speculation Initially, men of RTGUYS speculated that the Karkaradans were of Raven Guard or Night Lord descent, or possibly a loyalist remnant. Moreover, given that they are believed to have been founded by M32 and most of their war gear appears to be heresy era, they are most likely of the second founding or a product of the heresy. Most of the evidence for these theories is based on their military tactics and the few descriptions we had of marines outside of their armor. Their favored tactics, relying heavily on stealth and surprise, would seem to fall in line with the Raven Guard's combat doctrines, at least on a strategic level, where they appear suddenly into whatever battle zone they are targeting without warning. However on a tactical level, they are comparatively unsubtle. Their preference for close combat, total slaughter, and the strategic use of terror put them at odds with the tactical operator style of the modern Raven Guard. 
their method of war is closer to the pre-heresy night lords, if substantially higher in body count, or the world eaters, if they were a little more subtle. To give an example, they appeared above a shrine world and immediately took command despite the mass unrest such an action caused. They then forcibly shut down the shrines the world was famous for, thus provoking a miniature rebellion and coaxing the Jenna Stealer cult out of hiding. So whilst they have subtle overarching goals, one could argue that they are quite direct in the methods of achieving it. Physically, the Karkaradans displayed pale white skin and black eyes with black sclera. These were common traits of people living upon Lucalius and Nostramo, the homeworlds of Corvus Corax and Conrad Kurz, respectively. While the modern Raven Guard exhibit these traits as a result of mutations within their gene seed, Imperial Lama states that the Space Shark's gene seed is unusually pure, that is stable, and that these traits are unlikely to be the result of mutation. However, their chief librarian has tooth identical growths on his elbows and around his neck which comes from a degraded genetic inheritance which essentially gives him shark skin. A condition that affects the entire chapter being much more common on older Karkaradans. They also suffer from something they call the blindness a condition that can make them lose all control during combat to the extent they may even attack their own. This makes their appearance all the more unusual, as the Karkaradans are known to take recruits from the worlds they conquer. Meaning there is no common genetic source that could explain their development other than through their gene seed. Interestingly, the chief librarian also seems to make a note of the third captain's particular genetic heritage, as if it were somehow significant. It may very well be that the Karkaradans have more than one gene seed source. Corvus Corax was noted for his snow white skin, and Conrad Kurz for his black eyes. Too long didn't read official fluff presents their origins as being ambiguous, even to the point of mutual contradiction within the same story. Both Raven Guard offshoots and Night Lords believe they are related, whilst they retain a lot of World Eater style equipment and tactics. As with a lot of GW fluff, it's unlikely to get explained. Fucking weeb. Too long didn't read. The first mention of the Karkaradan says that their gene seed might be Raven Guard but doesn't expand on that, given that this was during the time that the Blood Ravens were really in the popular vogue. The idea that the Karkaradans are secretly loyalist traitors was pretty popular because their tactics are more like the Night Lords than anyone else's. GW has tried to walk it back a bit by saying the Raven Guard were basically the Night Lords only with Korax instead of Kurz since then, but the debate still rages on because most of the documents supporting the Raven Guard hypothesis are speculative and universe. And the Imperium would probably cover up a loyal chapter being descended from traitors if the Blood Ravens are anything to go by. Horus Heresy III Extermination suggests they're the descendants of Terran-born Ravenguard exiles led by Shade Lord Arcus Fowl. The grey armored and white face pre Korax Zixth Legion who had a reputation for going from stillness to extreme brutality and were basically taken under Horus Lupercal's wing in the centuries. Before their own Primarch was discovered. The exiles are referred to as a nomad predation fleet the same as the Karkaradans in the Badab War books and their cognomen during the early Great Crusade era was Pale Nomads. A title given to them by the Lunar Wolves and also the title of T. Kahirangi, the chapter's current chief librarian, rumored to be only three generations removed from the original exiles. The Repo Prime captain of the 3rd Battle Company wears armor bearing the skull and lightning bolts of the Terran Pacification War further highlighting the chapter's links to the pre-Crusade, Legions, and Tiberus' distinctive shark-like helmet is also featured in the book. In Horus Heresy 6 however they raid the Night Lords for supplies, which includes Gene Seed which would make them chimeric if they tried to use it and in Robbie McNiven's Black Library novels Red Tithe and Outer Dark the only books we have dedicated to our Jawsome Friends it outright states that the Space Sharks are a chimeric combination of Raven Guard and Night Lord Gene Seed, so the debate rages on. Raven Guard. Following the publication of Imperial Lama 10, new evidence was published to support the Raven Guard theory by Games Workshop's licenses. Presumably the idea that every traitor legion has a secret loyalist successor was too much for them. Fantasy Flight Games Death Watch RPG included rules for playing the Karkaradans on other chapter. Among the fluff, it is stated that Death Watch apothecaries have occasionally had the chance to analyze the gene seed of Karkaradans slain in the service of the Death Watch and that they bear certain genetic markers unique to the Raven Guard. Of course, this being the Imperium of Man, you can never be certain what they're actually finding or if the records are accurate. For Orals Horus Heresy Book 3 included a bunch of new information on the Raven Guard, and their predecessor legion, the Pale Nomads. 
The Pale Nomads were noted for being the Emperor's preferred operators, often stealthing their way into enemy fortresses and armies to slay their leaders should they refuse surrender, and adopting multi-angle strike and fade tactics if the enemy continued to fight on. The latter is a favor tactic of the Karkaradans on the battlefield. The Pale Nomads were known for crushing any hint of resistance, which some have equated to the Space Sharks decimating entire star systems in order to sow terror. Their tactics evidenced a disdain for humans that the Raven Lord couldn't stomach. Which is similar to the attitude adopted by the Space Sharks during the Badab War when they exterminated Badab and hundreds of loyalist Space Marines along with it. The Pale Nomads were also slavers who would take children from defeated worlds to raise as legionnaires, a practice that the Space Sharks have adopted. The Zeric tribesmen from which the Pale Nomads recruited also had a tradition of tattooing their bodies and painting their armor with tribal markings. This could possibly explain why the Space Sharks have an abundance of Mark IV armor alongside their other heresy era tech. Since the Raven Guard were the first to get their hands on them when they entered production during the Horus Heresy and that they're unusually stealthy with a variety of sensory systems to assist them in the void of space. Additionally, the Raven Guard were revealed to suffer from a gene C defect known as the Ashblind or Sable brand. Similar to the Black Rage, this defect caused otherwise normal space marines to charge into battle seeking only to destroy all trace of their foes, whether they lived or died. Those afflicted would develop eyes of solid black and would neither speak nor reason until the condition passed. Finally, it is stated that Korax would divest the Raven Guard of the surviving Terran-born Pale Nomads, whom he found too similar to the cruel lords he overthrew on deliverance. One of the many branches of Raven Guard he sent off on isolated, never-ending crusades contained the battle barge Nika, an old English word for a water sprite or monster later to be found in the fleet of space sharks who ended the Badab War. Tellingly, in Horus Heresy Book 3, Korax had no idea what happened to the fleet of Terran exiles or to its master Arcus Fowl and made no effort to contact them in the build-up prior to the drop site massacre. There is no evidence that these exiles were recalled after the massacre either, despite the 4000 men officially counting towards about half of the size of the remaining legion. So they were considered an entirely separate force. They could simply have been designated a new chapter following the end of the civil war. According to the Karkaradan Outer Dark novel, the descendant marines of the exiles, still under the Great Crusade era name Ashen Claws, now settles on the planet to target his prime beyond the Gule Stars region. Only a few people, including the Space Sharks, know of their existence. Great Tither occasions when the Space Sharks trade war machines and genocides for the Ashen Claws aspirants and neophytes. Also, Tiberus's claws were once the Ashen Claws relics but somehow were taken from them. Loyalist traitors. Contradicting the Raven Guard theory are some logical inconsistencies, the issue of their battle tactics, and recently published material from Horus Heresy Book 6 where it is revealed that the above mentioned 4000 Terrans exiled by Korvax from the Raven Guard turned full renegade, calling themselves the Ashen Claws and abandoning the Imperium to build their own domain and the Segmentum Tempestus. With no contact from the Imperium, no support from the Emperor, and no reward for their loyalty, it seems likely that other Raven Guard exiles could have turned. Interestingly, this band of exiles raided the fortress worlds of the Night Lords for supplies before returning to the darkness beyond the Imperium. The fact that the Karkaradans adhere to a known pattern of crusading behavior, the Nomad Predation pattern, would seem to indicate that their recruiting practices aren't unique to any legion or chapter but an established space marine tactic for dealing with long crusades beyond the supply lines of the Imperium. Rather than being a relic of Zeric nomads recruited by the Emperor, it seems likely that the space sharks are only unique and that they utilize this pattern exclusively. Obeying the order to ravage the foes of mankind in the darkness beyond the galactic plane, it also points to them either being formed prior to the implementation of the Codex Astartes or an utter disregard for it. If the Space Sharks were founded during the second founding, you'd expect them to have roughly equal portions of their gear granted to them from their original legion, and thus have higher proportions of more modern gear such as Mark V Corvus V Aquila plate, yet it is older Mark V Heresy plate alongside Farbas pattern bolt guns which predominantly fill the ranks. This points to the Space Sharks resupplying during the throes of the Heresy and their access to more recent patterns of war gear have come from salvaged or reclaimed equipment gathered over the years. Even their revered Terminator suits seem to be modified in unorthodox ways just to keep them operational. If they descend from any other Primarch, especially considering their tactics and manner of deployment, 
It's possible that they simply salvaged Nicker and other war gear from some distant and bloody battlefield. The Space Sharks' preferred tactics are bloody and brutal, far more so than expected from any pre-heresy Space Marine Legion besides the Night Lords and the World Eaters. Although the information about the Raven Guard pre-Corax does resolve this inconsistency to an extent. During the Badab War they had no qualms about using the extermination of worlds and entire systems loyal to the Mantis Warriors to draw them into battle by the scale of their horror and they would use the shattered survivors of their bloody attacks to demoralize and weaken rebel forces. The history, as known, of the Space Sharks points to their being present during the second founding. Whether the Raven Guard exiles were recalled or returned on their own, or if they were a loyalist remnant of the Night Lords, or more unlikely the World Eaters, and were given the chance to forge a new life and history. It seems odd that they would have been dispatched to such distant battlefields if they weren't regarded with mistrust by the High Lords of Terror and assuming they possessed a reputation for such brutality that ravage is a more appropriate word for their orders than harry or destroy, they should be descended from a legion or portion of a legion with a particularly bloody reputation. Amusingly, the same honor the chapter splat book that posits that the Karkaradans are descended from the raven guard also says they are of the 23rd founding, descended from the eagle warriors. And the chapter immediately preceding them in the splat book, the reasonable marines, are definitively stated to be a second founding descendant of the raven guard. While the raptor's skin grows translucent and their hair grows darker as they age, the space sharks gain grey, shark-like skin and their hair turns whiter as they age. In addition, the Karkaradans by implication have a fully functioning set of gene seed organs, unlike the raven guard and raptors who lack functioning mucronoid and or betcher's glands as do other Raven Guard successors. Night Lords. The Karkaradans' deliverance of bloody and total judgment upon the followers of the rebellious Badab chapters is in line with the Night Lords' precurs and pre-heresy role and attitudes towards. Those who failed the Emperor in loyalty or deed, brutal purges of the disloyal would build into a reputation that became one of terror and bloody death under Conrad Kurz, and his use of fear and fluid. Almost wild maneuvers in battle are seen by some in the descriptions of the Space Sharks' battles. The Space Sharks' apparently fractious nature and their manner of giving personal titles of distinction and honor could be echoes of the Night Lord's practices as well. Many commanders and captains would have personal honorifics, like ZSO Sahal, would either earn idiosyncratic titles or have lurid and unique ranks within the Legion's organizational structure. Likewise, the Red Wake could be an honorific specific to the Chapter Master, or a personal one, as the Night Lords were grouped into semi-independent companies with individual names traditions, and markings. It's possible the Karkaradans could be one such company that rejected the heresy or returned to the Emperor's light. It would also explain why their forces never seem to gather in full chapter strength. Having passed down this tradition of building brotherhood solely within small, tribal bands like the gangs of Nostramo and fighting in semi-independent units as preferred by the Night Haunter, they would see little reason to fight together while other conflicts and enemies require their notice. The chapter's preference for close combat is in stark contrast to the Raven Guard's preference for long-ranged and quick-moving strikes. Especially as they prefer stealth and speed to the roar of assault jetpacks and jet bikes. However, these tactics were favored by the Night Lords and their terror squads. Indeed, the enforced silence and refusal to coordinate with Imperial forces of the Space Sharks is similar to the silence that terror squads would work with during the latter years of the Great Crusade, rather than being a gene seed curse. As with the Raven Guard, the Karkaradans simply isolate their Vox nets and refuse to speak to anyone unless it is truly urgent and necessary. As with the Space Sharks, the Night Lords were infamous for stealing the youth of conquered worlds for rapid implantation and hypno-indoctrination. While the former could also be a hallmark of the Nomad Predation deployment pattern, the latter is a practice that seems to have been preferred by the Night Lords since it was the fastest and quickest way to make a new, battle-ready space marine in spite of the risks of instability and insanity it engendered. World Eaters. Yet another possibility may be World Eaters, since space sharks are silent and brooding outside of battle but go absolutely batshit crazy when in battle, no questions asked, and they seem to have a preference for chain axes, which is somewhat unusual among loyalist space marines. The love of chained weapons is carried over in a few other ways. One marine has what can only be described as a chain club staff, with an enormous flat chain blade running up one edge and handles on the opposite side at either end potentially doubling as a very heavy duty eviscerator. Their predilection for close combat and bloody melee, to an even greater degree than the space wolves, would be in keeping with the attitudes of the world eaters and the warhounds.
Like the World Eaters, the Space Sharks have a preference for drop pod assaults, fast vehicles like land speeders, and assault terminators, and it can be argued that Tiberus is terminator bodyguards. The Red Brethren, are reminiscent of Angren's own terminator posse, the Devourers. Some of their ships also possess Ursus Claws, which only World Eaters use but then again, it could just be a salvaged ship. The main problem with this theory is the Butcher's Nails. We can assume one of two things when it comes to the nails. The Space Sharks learn to control their urges outside of battle, lest they snap and massacre each other, since they're out in the void of space for long periods of time doing nothing. Or they could have simply phased them out of their recruitment process after the Horus Heresy, seeing as it drove the other world eaters fucking bonkers and was detrimental in the long run. And whilst there were very few loyalist night lords only two examples in the canon thus far, there are canonically loyalist world eaters. Both at Istvan 3 and scattered around the Imperium during the heresy. Chimeric Genocide. As another wrench thrown in, in Robbie McNiven's Black Library novel Red Tithe, it is heavily hinted that there are, in fact, multiple genocides utilized by the Space Sharks, primarily Raven Guard, Night Lords, and World Eaters. Given the typical canon conflicts at the Black Library and known for, this should be looked at with skepticism at least and as a half-assed excuse to explain why they have trays of all three legions at best. Hopefully this will be elaborated on in the future but for now we can only theorize what this entails. It is possible that the Karkaradans once consisted of Black Shields of Raven Guard and both Loyalist Night Lords and World Eaters during the Horus Heresy. And after a time they were reformed into their own chapter and the traitor aspects of their origins were buried away. This could explain why their combat doctrine is an odd hybrid of their three supposed predecessors. Any mutations they have are hard to connect to any one legion. Why their equipment is so old and haphazard. And why they were sent out in the void of space due to their origins. Until we have hard evidence from Forge World itself on any such black shields. However, this is up in the air. Another, simpler explanation is that, given the nature of the space sharks to scavenge whatever they find, it's possible that they harvested the genocide of the fallen marines they have killed. It's never explicitly said that their genocide is comprised of only the three suspected legions, rather, it just happened to just be mostly the aforementioned three, for all we know they could trace back to every legion through a small percentage of their genocide, though admittedly, this train of thought makes their origin even harder to pinpoint as we don't have a clear cut predecessor. And it should be kept in mind that a good chunk of this information in the novel was divulged to one of the space sharks by a demon. A demon. For shit's sake. As we've seen with Magnus, Chaos usually doesn't give accurate information. This said, this is practically confirmed in HH6, where the Ashen Claws Raven Guard raid the Nostromo Sector to take their gear and genocide. So if the Karkaradans are the Ashen Claws or a related group successor, then they're Raven Guard and Night Lords. As of the novel Outer Dark, sequel to Red Tithe, it has been confirmed that the Karkaradans are related to the Ashen Claws and have a shaky pact with them. When the Karkaradans red tithes can't refill their ranks fast enough, they are permitted to conscript young boys for augmentation from the fragmented domains that the Ashen Claws hidden beyond the Imperium's borders in exchange for war material and fresh Korax derived gene seed. It also seems their relationship is a shaky one prone to conflict. This suggests that the Karkaradans origins may lie with the Raven Guard exiles but the two groups split over whether to remain loyal to the Emperor or not. Regardless, both are willing to secretly come together against threats from beyond such as the Tyranids. When exchanging gene seed and war gear for aspirants and fleet support, however, the Ashen Claws make a point of confirming whether the gene seed being offered had been contaminated with their disgusting breed, implying either widespread degeneration and mutation, or chimeric gene seed among the Karkaradans. Given how things were during the heresy, it's perfectly reasonable that there's some world eater genocide in there, as well as some loyalists who joined up as black shields. Seeing as they spent the heresy as an independent force at the edges of the Imperium. Daily Rituals. 4am wake up, the space sharks emerge from their tanks. Before leaving, they make sure to feed their pet sharks. 5am morning prayer, the space sharks pre that the emperor give them plenty of enemies to kill. Any marine who prays to be turned into a shark is forced to fight a real shark while bound. 6 am morning firing rites, the space sharks engage in ranged combat. The bolters are discarded within 5 minutes and the sharks charge into melee. Chapter serfs who often come to clean up afterwards are shocked to see chain swords, power swords, knives, hammers, axes, and the occasional bite mark in the target dummies. Most of the dummies appear to be fish shaped, 
8 a.m. morning battle practice, the space sharks practice combat maneuvers. Most training focuses on underwater combat. Eating the enemy is a heavily encouraged tactic. 10 a.m. morning meal, the space sharks consume a light meal consisting of a barrel of live fish. The marine who eats the fastest gets to hold the chapter relic a shark tooth. 11 a.m. tactical indoctrination, the space sharks learn what is friend and what is food. They must constantly be told that blueberries are not food, but friends. They also learn to brutally eviscerate tanks and other armored structures. The viewing of Jaws is sometimes allowed for educational purposes. 1 p.m. afternoon meal, the space sharks collectively attack a Kasachan devil. The use of ranged weapons is forbidden, and the battle brother who rips the tail off gets to eat the first bite. Generally, it will be eaten shortly after death. 3 p.m. afternoon battle practice, the space sharks practice fighting against land enemies. Pulverizing Dark Elder and Necrons with power fists and hammers is heavily encouraged. Battle brothers who get bored may target orcs and cultists. 4 p.m. afternoon firing rites. The space sharks fire upon cutouts of shark hunters and surfers. This time, the chapter surfs find few bolter casings and instead find bite marks. 5 p.m. evening meal. The space sharks consume a live squiggoth. As per tradition, only the use of rusty kitchen utensils, glass, rocks, and hammers is permitted. Stabbing at the eye is heavily encouraged. 7 p.m. evening prayer. The space sharks gather to worship and give thanks to the Void Father. Once a month, the space sharks celebrate communion by drinking fish oil and eating surfboards. 8 p.m. free time. The space sharks are permitted to engage in recreational activities. Playing with and feeding pet sharks and encouraged, whilst watching Sharknado and other comedies is another popular activity. If they've been especially good, marines may be allowed the privilege of feeding the megalodon that lives in the aquarium behind the Knickers Bridge. 11pm sleep time, the space sharks are sent back to their tanks for rest. So yeah, normally now nah, I would like, you know, talk about them, but like, fuck that, I'm just gonna show you my card ons cause I think they're pretty cool, I love this chapter. I wouldn't play them otherwise, so look, check these boys out. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call child protection.
protective services. It's time to stop! <laughs>